Hello and welcome to episode 6 of the Human Comedy 1 Hour Endurance Race series. Today we're going to be focusing on the 1 Hour Endurance Race at Alsace. For this race there are so many different cars you can use. As you can see I used the 308, Superbird 365, the RX500, the Corvette C1, the Firebird Trans Am. You know, they used about 7 or 8 cars there until I found one that actually worked and for me it was the Ferrari 365 GTB4. The PP limit for this race is 460 so you can't purchase that many upgrades so I purchased the power restrictor, the ballast, fully customizable computer and the brake balance controller. Now for me the brake balance controller made the biggest difference as it brought more stability to the car. Now to get the PP down to 460 we're going to need to detune the car a little bit. So we're going to decrease the ECU output adjustment to 70% and then increase the ballast up to 106. I also changed the brake balance controller down to minus two. And for our strategy, we're gonna be starting on comfort medium tires. We're gonna be performing a two-stop strategy, pitting every 20 minutes or roughly every eight laps. We don't need to change tires because tire wear is absolutely fine, but we will need to refuel fully every single time. Now, when it comes to this race, one thing you need to be really mindful of is the AI will be incredibly aggressive compared to the other races that we've done so far. So just be mindful when you are looking for overtakes that in previous races you think you'd be able to push the AI out of the way, because in this one they will fight you back. Now, something special about this race is that when you start, all the cars are grouped closer together. Whilst this poses different challenges, of more cars in a tightly confined space, it means that you're able to get these overtakes done a lot quicker, except for the front three cars, as they are considerably quicker compared to the rest of the pack. This area of the track is the area that I struggled with the most. I could not tell you how many times that I span out here, I, I would just get the braking zone all wrong, and then turning and braking at the same time it just you just lose control of the car very frustrating so you'll notice that when I'm doing this I approach this area of the track the slowest because I don't want to mess it up on the other hand of that coming up the hill the AI seem to go extremely slowly out of here so as you can see I'm getting a couple hundred tenths as we're going up and then down the hill as we get to the braking zone at the bottom of the hill the AI will break a lot later here but because you're carrying more speed you'll need to break earlier as you can see there I, I broke at roughly the same area as the AI cars I completely out broke myself and ended up going into third place but I suppose in the end it worked out so it doesn't actually matter but just be mindful okay I'm going to show you my fastest lap now so as we're coming down to turn one braking just before the 50 meter board going down into second gear just be careful if you apply too much throttle here you'll start to get a lot of wheel spin and then the car will drag to the right As we come around to turn three, we're looking to break at the black and white blocks on the left hand side. Again, be careful not to apply 100% throttle here too early, otherwise you'll get a lot of wheel spin. Our next breaking point is going to be at the 100 meter board. And we're going to go down in second gear, cut as close as you can to the inside apex, use the outside kerb as well as you need to. And approaching this left hander, our next breaking point is going to be just before we get to the black and white directional arrows on the right hand side. For the upcoming hairpin we don't need to break here we just let off we're going to aim for the inside part of the track we're feathering the throttle as we go and as we're approaching my least favorite part of the track as you can see we're about a second up there we're getting gently on the brakes before we get to the slight left hander letting off and then braking a bit further And for this inclined left hander, we're not braking, we're just letting off. The car will slow down itself due to the incline. Be 
careful when you get back on the throttle because again if you apply 100% throttle too early wheel spin and you'll lose control of the car and as we start to come down the hill our next braking point we are looking for left curve in the tarmac we're braking just before we get to that and that is my fastest lap it's a little bit disappointing that we did it on lap 4 and we didn't actually manage to improve a 227.0 This is now a part of the race where we're coming up to two back markers. They are extremely slow compared to the rest of the pack. And luckily for me, the two cars in front of me both get slowed down considerably. As we're bumping Mangano out of the way there, and then his Al, he gets caught behind the second slowest car. So, easy overtake for us. So we're now approaching the end of the 8th lap, we're about 20 minutes in and this is our time to complete our first pit stop. There's no need for us to change tyres as tyre wear is absolutely fine but we are going to completely refuel. One of the most bizarre moments when I was doing this circuit was one of the AI cars lost control and that ended up being double yellow flags. Now at this point I don't know what was going on in my head. I, I thought they'd gone away, they clearly hadn't and I ended up picking myself up a three second penalty which was so stupid. So let's have a look at what actually happened with the AI. Now after we've served our 3 second penalty, we don't actually catch first place until the 16th lap. So we're just we're just biding our time, we're looking for a place to overtake, obviously we don't want to end up going off track or you know causing a collision, something that will end up ruining our race. We do end up taking this corner a lot better than first place, so if we get a better exit and then we're locking up the inside, just to nudge our way in. But unfortunately the first place is short lived for now as we're coming up to our second pit stop. Again, no reason to change tyres, just fully refuel. And let's see where we come out. So we've come out in 10th place, the key now is to just put some consistent laps in and as you're about to see the delta is coming down and down and down, next lap it's down to 16 seconds, lap after just under 11 seconds, lap after that just over 5 seconds, we can see the first place now. And later on in the lap we do end up catching first place, I think this is a really fitting place for us to take the lead the part of the track that I struggled with the most and we end up taking first place uh, I mean for me it worked out amazingly couldn't have asked for a better place to gain the lead so all we need to do now is get past this Samba bus and then we've got time for just over three laps to bring it home and coming down the hill now for our last lap be sure not to outbreak ourselves For me, this was the most difficult challenge of them all. I tried this maybe 10 times, different cars, different strategies, but this one worked best for me, and I'm so glad to have it done. For completing this challenge, you'll, you'll earn yourself 1.2 million credits. And there we have it, the most difficult race so far, in my opinion, 
one hour endurance at Alsace. Thank you so much for watching. On the left hand side is a link to all the Gran Turismo 7 missions and on the right will be a link to the next one hour endurance race when it's posted.